Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunker down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm gonna be in that winter circle someday. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this episode of What Horse. Are you yes, ready? Sir. Yeah, I'm ready. You got a lot to talk about today because it's going to be educational for a lot of people. A lot of people don't do like you do when you break <laughs> one to trim. Yeah. So we're, we're going to show that. That'll work. But you, you got something you got to do first. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And KD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. Remember the winner's circle. You got the gift shop, you got knives, you English saddles and accessories, English and cutback, Western and trooper saddles and accessories, complete line attack, bits, spurs, training aids, stable supplies, grooming medication, horse clothing, riding apparel, accessories, and footwear. While you're in town, go down to the winner's circle and tell them what a horse sent you. The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. <laughs> All right, I got a few announcements to make. The Penny Royal is next weekend, the 20th, it's the 3rd and the 4th, and it will be held in Oak Grove, Kentucky Equestrian Center. For information, call Jennifer Barr, 931-205-3493, Marty Barr, 615-586-3220. Start time Friday nights, 5.30. Start time Saturday nights, 5 o'clock. At the same time, Alabama is having their annual barn party, and that's always a good thing. They, they raise a ton of money for camps mile to mile. I saw where they gave 25000 again this year. They work okay. hard down there. They do. They do a good job. Well, this year, the, coat, the uh, barn party is going to be located at Wooten Stables in Coleman, Alabama. You can contact Gerald Campbell at 205-566-6091 or Nathan Clark, 256-505-1210 or David Latham, 256-572-1820. And the start time for that is 10 o'clock. Now, that's going to be going on the same time we're going to be in Kentucky. Yeah. So this is the first time I missed that in several years because yes. that's always a good thing to go to. Always have a good time. Trainer show, March 15th through the 18th. They've moved up to four days this year. 
Uh, and it's going to be located in the newly named Cooper Steel Building or Arena. And uh, you can contact Melanie Bryant, 931-639-3587, or D. Cantrell, 706-366-1011. Start time each night is 6 p.m. Judges, Brent Greider, Dickie Shrivner, and David Sisk. They're going to be tough. Yes. I tell you, Jerry, a lot of people talk about our horse and the gentleness in it. I'm going to show a quick video of a little girl. Why don't you look there? And you know what horse that is? Which one? That's one of the stake horses this year. That right there is Honor and Remember. And that little girl's Mackenzie Davis. That's Heidi Waddell's yes. daughter, which now it's Dan Waddell's daughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's the way that works. That's right. That's get the right. wife, get the child. Get you get the child. That's get them right. both. You get them both. Got them both. But that, that little girl, now, that's a five-year-old stud. And oh, this horse is real general. This Tennessee walking horse is one of the most generalist breed of horse I've ever been around. I've been around a whole bunch of different ones, you know. Well, it, it just amazes me. People, people will talk, 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 but I'm, I'm going to tell everybody something. If you're mean to an animal, you'll make that animal mean. mean that's right. If you abuse that animal, you'll make that animal abusive. Mm -hmm. So everybody needs to think about that when they start accusing the walking horse industry of everything they do. Look at the way people are around the horses that they show. You can tell. Yes. It's not that hard. That little girl goes in the stall, the horse standing in there, all he's doing is loving on her. <laughs> yep, you're right. She's having a ball. So that's something for everybody to remember. It ain't... it. It, it's how you treat animals, and that's one of the things we're getting into today, a little bit later. Uh, first, though, we've got some contenders, and uh, these contenders are horses that are either moving up, like Cavender. I'm going to say right now, that's, that's my four-year-old favorite for this year. That horse is going to be hard to beat. Oh, he is. He's a nice, real uh, nice horse. Knox Blackburn has got his number. Bruce and Robin McDonald are tickled pink. He is one heck of a horse. That's a real nice horse. Though. That horse there is always caught my eye from the first time I ever seen him show. He stands out. Hey, I, I remember the first time I saw him was over at uh, Thor Sports. Yeah. I said right then, I said, that horse, is, it, he had everything then. It was early in the year, but he had everything, and all he's done is move forward each time I've seen him. And when he come in up there at the celebration last year, there was no doubt. He's a nice old. Knox has done a super good job with him. That's some kind of good, buddy. Oh, yeah. He is one of the 2023, and I'm going to say he is the top contender in that four-year-old division, and there's a lot of good ones oh, in yes. there. And you got Twisted with Honors and Tyler Balkum. This right here is going to be a good horse. He won the Scoop Reader's Choice Award, and he was shown by Allison and Tyler this year. Yes. That's her new, new horse. There's being Pocahontas was also voted Horse of the Year by the readers of the scoop. The great horse. It is a nice horse. And that horse been shown in open and amateur competition. Allison is one of these people that will share her horses like that right there. Allison Bicknell. Won the world championship in auxiliary members division. And her name is no longer Bicknell. She has changed. Here you go. It's the medalist in Eli Cunningham. It's one of your youth. Now he's just one of their youth. Yeah. He just he's just one of the best, better of the youth. We've got several real good ones. That's a real nice horse. Eli does a good job on that horse right there. He does a super job. 
I tell you what, his granddad is a very proud man. Oh, yeah. I don't blame him. Do not blame him. It was because of him and Allie Joe Jacobs that we came up with that first time the show so, class. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it ain't it ain't fun when you got to open up and, and start out showing against one of those yes. two. Eli Cunningham and Allie Joe Jacobs are two of the best Lebanon underwriters there are. Right here's Joe Paul and Winky Gruber. Now they're going to be in the specialty this year. They're not going in the canter class. They're okay. going. They're going specialty. When I talked to uh, Shane Porterfield, of course. Now Shane owns that horse by himself. Now Shane's a, a real good guy. Oh, you can't beat him. He, yeah. He's helping us with our show in Lynchburg for the kids. That's a good horse. That horse been good for a long time. Oh yeah, Shane's getting me a new hat too. Right here, honors image and Tanner Burks for Shane Porterfield. Now he's he's going to be in, in the. I believe he he'll move up this year. But now he's yeah. he's tough. I think he'll go in the age division. I know he's got one uh, that he's going to go into the uh, 15 two and under competition. But I, I believe that one's in showing up. Up. I wouldn't be surprised if you see Shane on him one time showing hey, him. Hey, you know. that's what I'm thinking. Here's I Am Mighty Jose. Now, he, he got hurt and missed quite a bit, but yeah. now he's back, and he'll be campaigned in the 15-2 and under division okay. this year. Tanner does a good job with Tanner him. Tanner does a real good job. But now you can't ever tell. You'll have to look up and see if Shane come across through there on him. I think Shane did show him a time or two. That's another. Shane's got some mighty good horses. Yeah. yeah. Right there. I am big enough in Maxine Beasley. Now I'm gonna tell you, you don't, there ain't no telling who you're gonna find on that one this yes. year. Because they're talking about taking some uh, best horses and start showing them. Yeah. But now I am big enough. Either one of them young ladies can ride that horse. Oh, yeah. Maxine. BB, either one can get it done. They're watching, you know, they're 15 now. I tell you. <laughs> they hard to believe I'm. Man, they grow up quick. Yeah. You look around and here they are. That pony class is going to be tough. Yeah, it will be tough. Right here is a Super Bowl MVP. Hey, 12 to 17. You just wonder, you got those two horses, then you start wondering which ones are they going to end up on this year. If they're going to take some I tell you, that juvenile class, that youth class is a, is a heavy class now. I'm going to tell you, it's a lot of good horses in them classes. There's a lot of people glad they're not a youth. Yes. That they don't have to show against them. And dreading when they reach the 18 and up age. That's right. That horse been a good one for a long time. But those are the ones that we've got right now. Now, next week, we're going to have some more contenders. Yeah. I just can't wait for the show season to start. Hey, I can't either. I'm looking forward to it. We will also be live streaming these contenders. Yes. When it comes to celebration, I mean, the Penny Royal, when we do it, during the live stream, we're going to, these are going to be our commercials. Right. One other, I was over at your barn, and a young lady you're working with riding. Now, she, she wrote a little bit of everything, but we're going to be showing her, and 
I need you to talk because I, th I think she something happened to her horse, I believe. Yes, this horse got sick and passed away, but Macy, she's she's learning real well. I showed her back a while back in, in, a, in a lead line class, and she done good, and then she got a little, Macy got sick herself and kind of stopped riding for a little while, but now she's getting back down and riding a performance horse. Just like you're saying, you see these horses, and you see one, you ride one one day and buy one the next. That's it. You know, um, Macy come there, and when she was like 11 years old, you know, when she was just um, five years old, she wanted to see a Tennessee walking horse. Ain't never seen a Tennessee walking horse in her life. And it just pulled up her and her grandparents, Patty and, Met and, and Larry Malone, and they come up and wanted to see a horse, and I picked up and let her rode a horse with me, and from that day on, she, she loved these horses. She's been ready to go. And she's getting ready, and we're going to try to get her ready to show it that, at, your, at the show we're going to have in April. Well, she'll be in that first time to first show time class, show right? First time show performance class, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, now, I'm going to tell everybody, that first time to show class has got a big, big part of that. There'll be two winners in it. Yes. Now, the, our show in April, it's April 8th in Lynchburg, is mainly for youth. We're going to have eight youth classes but we'll actually have nine winners because the first time to ride is two different split. Yes. Flat shot one way, performance the next. All nine of those names of the winners go into a hat. Now realize that some of these may have win two classes. Their name may be in there twice. twice yeah. But after class 22, which is our final youth class, there's going to be a name drawn out, and that one youth gets $500 in cash. That's a good deal there. But Macy, she really loved these horses now. She's kind of, she rides these horses, and then she got another little pony that she rides that she's want to learn how to jump well, and everything. Oh, boy. <laughs> and so, I mean, she's, she just a horse, she's just a horse person. Well, on this $500, Wayne and Janelle Hart, are the ones that are sponsoring that class or the that drawing and i thought that was super she gonna learn how to jump this one yes i hope the jump ain't too high no the jump ain't too high because <laughs> <laughs> that horse ain't too tall that's her little pony that she rides and cheyenne she's um a little half quarter horse and half leaner well i can tell you a horse that size at that pace right there is a great, great way for a child to learn to ride, and a lot of people need to watch this. Because lessons, we have a lot of different people to give riding lessons all over Middle Tennessee. Some of them don't use walking horses, yeah. they use other breeds for the training. Well, this horse right here, she learned different ways. She, right there, she's posting. So she learned how to ride a performance horse, a flat shot horse, a trotting horse, this to be a, you know, learning how to be a horse rider. That's it. That's the main thing. You know. There you go. So over there we do a little all different kind of ride list. <laughs> hey, learning to ride is, is special. Now it is. There you go. I know growing up, I found out quick that on the pony that I rode, if I'd get him to galloping, he seemed to smooth out yes. a lot smoother <laughs> than the trot. <laughs> but if I could get him to going, <laughs> it was a little bit smoother ride. Let me see what we got now. We did the honors of Pocahontas. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to take a break. And then when we come back, we've really got some good video. So we're going to take a pause for our sponsors. We'll be back in just a moment. Why do each one? So uh, get your catalog from me or sit yourself in the rooms. Want everybody to know the rooms of the games we're here today? So, 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 Where you at, Mark? 26, 27, 27. Last call. What do you get out of the done? So, so. You got 2600, 2600 here, and then 5600 and a half. 5600. 
Got an 11 and 5 here, 6, so 5,500, keep on at 5,500. And so, 1,100, Mark Hall, take it. Oh, 1,100, keep on. So, so, so. You break one, break the next one. That's the real deal, guys, right here. Opportunity is knocking right here, Andy Johnson. Here's a horse to take it home. Right at the is but so, so, so. You mount it. Six-time world champion in amateur and open competition, four-time amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dowell at Fantasy Farm in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Call 931-389-6983 for breeding information. More of What a Horse coming up. <laughs> You know, Jerry, before we go to this next video, I do have one thing I want to say. Yes, sir. You got a horse you want to run through auction, you take it to Mike Tibbs or Dave Roberts, and those words that you just saw, sold, 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 they get the best price on horses, and they, <coughs> they always do. seem to have a, a high number of sales. Yes. Hard to beat, hard to beat. Everybody knows that we, we clip our horses and clean them and get them prettied up for a horse show. And a lot of people say, well, that, that's, a, that's a job. But Jerry, you have a very unique way of giving a horse a haircut and letting him learn that it's not that big a deal. Yes, you just gotta take your time with them and show them that, you know. A lot of rubbing and no rubbing, twister. No twister. I don't let them like to put a twist on a horse. To, um, twi to clip him because my father always told me once you start something you got to continue doing yeah. that and you ever teach him the right way and, and teaching him where to, to let him trust you well I noticed that one came in pretty quick but now you've got him you've got him tied crossways and down yeah to where he can't rear up and, and really do a lot of damage and and start pawing and everything which is good but I that still doesn't stop them from throwing a fit yeah. every now and then. I have more attention on that rope that's tied down than the ones that's on the side. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can tell that. And just let him here relax and just take his time and get listen to the clippers and everything and get used to somebody rubbing them on top of the head. Well, I'll tell you what. He's, uh, I like the way you did this. Instead of going to cutting, you went to rubbing. Yeah. And, and just letting him feel that buzzing up again. The vibration <laughs> on him and stuff like that, because pretty much that's what they mostly jump from, is just the, the vibration the first time, and it's kind of getting used to it. But it's the very first time this coat ever been really got out of stall and touch. Well, that's, we, uh, people need to know that. We got him out. I, I put a video out of you leading him around, but that was the same day. Yeah. And uh, we did put just a tad of this video out, and there was one lady made the remark that, uh, she wished hers would stand that steel, but it, it, it's not always just that steel. Cause he, he, he has times when he throws his yeah. fit, but and you just keep going. That's right, you just don't, I mean, when he throw a fit, you let him throw his little fit and you let him calm down and you start back over. Well, he, uh, Well, he, he's pretty smart. Yes. Now that I'm going to give him very smart coat. It, like the racket he just now heard. He, some some horses jump through their skin over that, but he didn't. He just he, of course, it, it scared him a little bit, but he didn't go nuts over it. And that's one thing. When when you're looking at these coats, I just uh, now this right here is an honors out of a deal for real mare. Yeah. You know, and I just like to just take my time and let them learn, teach them how to be clipped. That's like shooting, um, trimming a horse for the first time on his feet, giving yep. him, uh, you know, shooing him, as teaching him how to do it instead of giving him some kind of tranquilizer or putting a twitch on them or whatever, learn them that they can do it. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to be doing that uh, with uh, Jeff Duke this week. Yeah. Uh, trimming this one's feet a little bit because he, he does have a pretty long toe. And you do this a couple of times with this coat like this here, eventually he'll be able, you'll be able to sit there and clip him with no problem, wouldn't even have to tie him down. Just drop the reins and he'll just stay in there. There we 
go. Let me sit back. Let me just let him sit there. Just let him do it. So the lady that said wished hers would stand still, yeah. now you know. He didn't stand yeah, still, still all the that's time. That's right. <laughs> This is good education for a lot of people on trimming their horse and knowing that it can be done. You just have to work with them, time properly, because he's got plenty of room to move his head, yeah. but he cannot rear up. And uh, that's the main thing. You don't want him to where they can rear up and paw you. Yeah. And just being calm with him. You know, yeah. you, when he done that little fit right there that he done, you know, if I would have got to yelling and hollering, that is made that much worse. Yeah. But just let him relax, and you can finish getting the job done. But pretty much all the horses I have at my stables or whatever, I can clip them without putting a twitch on, do the ears and all the same right. way, because I just try to teach them how to do it. Well, we're fixing to uh, trim his ears, and... Uh, that's when I really was expecting him to have a big fit. But being calm with him and talking yeah, talk to, him, to him, he, he really never, never really acted up no. that much on the ear part. But just raising up, watching my dad do stuff like that, I learned a whole bunch of this stuff from my dad. Oh, you know, just sitting just there watching, watching what he did, watching what he did. Because, you know, where I come down to Louisiana, we had all different type of horses, quarter horses, walking horses, and all, you know. Well, you know, most kids think their parents don't know nothing. Oh, yeah. At least you, <laughs> at least you had enough sense to think they knew more than yeah, you Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I noticed Jeremy pays strict attention to what you say. <laughs> he learned a lot. But you all, you can learn something from anybody. When you get to the point that you think you know it all, you don't know as much as you think you do. <laughs> That's it. Anybody can show you anything. You just thought you knew. That's right. My boy, he was going fishing. He wanted to use the boat. And this was when he was still a teenager. And one of his buddies, they backed the truck up there and hooked the boat up, and the boat lights wouldn't come on. And he said, what are we going to do? I said, just pull up real easy and slam your brakes on. He said, what? I said, just pull up, just, you know, just barely pull up and hit your brakes. He looked at his buddy and he said, he thinks we're dumb enough to believe that's going to fix everything. He drove up <laughs> just a little, hit them brakes, them lights come on. Both of them looked at me and said, how'd you do that? <laughs> they, they thought I was a magic man. <laughs> Uh, this coat here is a very smart coat. You know, all of them, all horses do different. You know, all of them will throw a little bit more of it, but you just got to sit there and just take your time and, and just do it. Well, I noticed he just kind of blended right with you once you got his attention and started working with him. And uh, afterwards, I could walk up to him, pet him. If he just... Uh, they're relaxing, and that has to do with a lot of horses. Now you're going to throw that fit again. You let him sit there, yeah. He just sit there, and then eventually. See, if I would have had them ropes on the side real tight right there, he really would throw a fit. He could wrap and flip mm -hmm. over backwards or whatever. But with that one rope holding down, you know, that kind of. That's it. It just looks like anything else with a horse. If you can control his head, you can control him. Well, you did a good job of this, and, and he took the he took the trimming well. Yeah. I mean, he only threw two. Well, no, nah, he threw three fits. Uh, the first one I I didn't video, but after that I did. Yeah. And uh, but none of them was any more than what he just did. Yeah. Yeah. But if you can control a horse's head, you got him controlled. A horse's biggest strength is through his head. Well, the next time you get ready to trim him up a little bit, he won't be near the problem, problem. Yeah, that's right. as he was this time. And then the next time, it'll be easier than that. I remember we did one video of you uh, trimming a yearling for the first time. Now, we started him a little earlier. Yeah. By the time he's a yearling, he'll just stand there and let you do what you want to do. 
But you know, I've seen older horses that you couldn't trim them. Yeah. I mean, I mean they, yeah. they just not going to have it. You're going to have to put a twister on them and work with them. And I got a few of older horses in that you had to do that. And by the time I got to pull one, I got to the point where I could trim them, you know, without no twister or whatever. Well, I can say this. This is, y'all remember this one right here. This is 911. And he is going to be a piece of work. He's already big. We just took him away from his mother, yes. what, a week, week uh -huh. and a half ago? Yeah. Rub on him and teach him how, you know, everything's okay. Let him know. Yeah. For all you first-timers out there, just remember, it's the tone of your voice and the way you talk to the animals is makes a world of difference. In between my dad and a lot of other people I worked for during the years, they taught me everywhere I went, I, they taught me something about a horse. Well, you know, a lot of people that, uh, if they remember back on the uh, Secretariat movie, the groom for that horse, if they remember the way he talked to the horse, mm -hmm. people may not believe, but that works. Oh yeah, it, it calms them down. It makes them realize that hey, that's one reason these horses they get along with kids a lot better than they do grown ups. You are exactly right. I love grandson. I had some yearlings, some weanlings that was out in the field that wean and never was touched and. It was a lot easier because I didn't know in the afternoons he was going out there by himself, out there riding the horse, um, petting on the horse himself. But now when I went and touched him, I said, man, these horses are so, are so friendly to fool with, they ain't wild. He said, he, told, he called me, no, no. He said, no, no, I can show you how to catch him. He just walked right there and he walked right there to him. <laughs> Well, they, the kids get out there and they play with them yeah. and they, they understand that. That's why I believe that, that fooling with these colts and stuff, red dirt girl, I could walk out in the pasture with a wormer and worm her Yes. and never put a halter on her. Just walk out there and lift her head up and put the wormer to her. She never threw a fit or anything. And once you give these horses haircuts and it make them look just so much better. I mean, it's just like a human being going to get a haircut from the barber shop. I mean, it is. Well, it's like Robert Morgan told me, uh, when when one's born, if you'll get down there and let it get your scent, yeah, that makes a difference too. Makes a big difference because they will remember that later. I know a buddy of mine told me, he said, oh, you're already making a pet out of them. Well, to me, all of them are pets. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I just can't help it. You, you pet on them, you talk to them. Did you see that? That coach finally realized that he wasn't going to get hurt or whatever and everything was all right, and he just stand there, just taking it. Yeah, he's sitting there now saying, how do I look? Yeah. Let him look in the mirror, and he, he'll be fine. And just don't get in no hurry with it, you know? Well, this whole video was about 16 minutes, Jerry. And you took your time. You didn't push him. But he got clipped. He looked good. And it's all in how you talk, how you treat, and how quick you go. You cannot yeah. push. You have to have patience. That's the biggest thing. And if you don't have patience, the horse business is not for you. That's it. You gotta you work to with patience. them. You got it off a of high speed now. Yeah. Is this the finesse speed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little thick hair up underneath that chin there. 
they got a nice set of ears. You know, after after we got done, you went out and walked him walked for a little yeah. bit, mm -hmm. and he he's got a good stride to him. I'm, I'm tickled with him. So you can see every once in a while he'll relax off that rope, the bottom rope there, mm -hmm. and the side rope, and well, stand there. Them side ropes are at ease right yeah. now, mm -hmm. and he doesn't have that bottom rope pulled. That's tight. right, he don't. He relax off of it. Now, if you in a hurry and it's kind of going there real quick, it'll make them more nervous. Cut his eyelashes yeah. off, please. I just hope we got people out there paying attention to this and learning and do their babies this way. If they do. It's going to be a whole lot better on them. Yeah. <whistles> Say, I'm done now. First haircut. Get that loose hair gone. Yeah. And we're ready to rumble. He just doesn't care, does he? No, he's getting, he's, he's real smart, Coach, very smart. But you know, honors is, is a great side, yeah. mm -hmm. no doubt about it. But arms deal for real. Every one of them that I have seen, they're smart. Yeah. They, they're easy to train. They're, they just get along with everything. You just have to talk to them and work with them. And I believe the bears are going to make fantastic brood mares. Oh, yeah. We're going to find out because we got this one, and now we're going with a gin to win. Yeah. On Vixen, that's that's a mare that's out of an armed and dangerous mare by deal for real. Mm -hmm. She can get it done. And I don't know, she, she moves real well. So plus she's a big mare. Oh yeah, that, she's that a real big a mare. Lot. Mm -hmm. And good talent in there, had a lot of talent. So I mean, the mare's got to have some talent. Well, we're gonna see where this one goes. Yeah. He's got his first haircut. Now we'll go to leading him a little bit. And then we will have this video will be up on YouTube for people to see. All right, we got, uh, last week we showed shoeing, and we talked about the package. Yes. And how the nails went into the package to build. So I got Jeff Duke to get, get a package out. This is him now. And he's getting the rubber ready for the rock back pad. But these are packages that have been put together for horses. And they're made up of flats and wedges. And each one of them is is different. Now what he's doing there is he's putting on a half shoe. Yeah. Now that half shoe, the front half is going to be metal. The back half is going to be rubber. Yes. And a lot of time you do that on a horse, that it all depends on the way the horse hit the ground. Mm -hmm. There, you put a little rubber, just give him a little bit more cushion on behind there. A little bit more weight to kind of help him throw forward there just a little bit. Well, I know that uh, this right here, I remember the horse it went on, and as far as I know, it's never been changed. Uh huh. But people can see the nails, these nails are not going into the horse's, horse's foot. That's right. <laughs> They're going into that package. Now he's cutting out a rock back pad to go on the back. So that to keep that horse from rocking back 
when he hits his heel, get him to go forward. Now that one there that, goes in the bottom. Right, that's the going in yeah. the bottom. The then he'll do the rock back. Yep. That's why I'm not a blacksmith. I've done it backwards. <laughs> There's a lot of use for a tire, Jerry, in Vietnam. Oh, yeah. The Vietnamese use tires to make them shoes. They take the inner tube, and make uh -huh. the strap. The bottom was was the bottom, the bottom. of the shoe. Okay. Jeff does a real good job. He does. Makes a pretty package yeah. too. Nice and smooth, looks good. And he does a good job working with the horses when they're makes no difference if it's flat shot or performance. He works with all of them. And he shoes other breeds. Yes. But I'm, I thought it'd be good for people to see this so they can see that all this fairy tales about look at all these nails yeah. in that horse's foot. That, that's just another false information. Imp false information, something that yes. they did to make you believe something and that wasn't true. So that's the majority of the nails is right there just in that package alone. Is none, it only Eight nails that goes in the actual yeah, horse's foot. foot. That's it. And that, that, that's what gets me. They, I just wish that more people would pay attention to the facts than they pay attention to some false story or something they claim to be exactly right yes. when it, it's completely wrong. And I know I dwell on it a lot, but I, I get so tired of, of hearing people say, well, they do this and they do that, when they don't know. Yeah. These horses get, get a lot of loving, a lot of attention. A lot of these blacksmiths, they're like carpenters. I mean, they build, they build in that it. package. They're like a carpenter, build a house or build a cabinet. There's the rock back. Yeah. Now, if, if I was a, one of these people out here who want people to believe something wrong, I'd, I'd wait until he got done with all this and say, now look at all them nails in that horse's foot. Yeah. Now that pad right there is the foot pad, and that's the only pad that's connected to that horse's foot. The only the nail, one. The nail into that horse's foot is that pad right there. And just about the size of a regular keg shoe. Yep. And doesn't weigh that much either. Yeah. Actually, this the package. My boots weigh more than some packages. Yeah. And that nail he doing there is just to line up the shoe to that package there. That's it. What gives me is they'll have right and left. Yep. Yeah. Well, that shoe is turned just like a regular shoe that's on your, like on your foot. You know, yep. where that shoe go on one side and the other, and he'll flare it out to where the more flared out part go to the outside of the horse's right. foot. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what he did. He marked that yeah. left, and then he drove that nail on down in there to where it will stay until he fits to the horse's foot. foot. Yeah. Then he'll prise it loose, and that starter pad, he'll nail on to yes. the horse. Mm -hmm. and then the package, he'll put the nails into the package. That's right. For, to keep it on the horse's foot. We're going to take a short break for our sponsors, and we'll be back in just a minute with a conclusion of today's show. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee walking horse, but I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. 
We've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411, and see if I can save you money on your communication. You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi night shows, sibling and progeny searches, rider cup standing, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much. All righty. All right. We got some more video, and this was provided by my good buddy, Bob Roach. He went down to Brandon Tate's uh, for his barn party. And uh, while I was going to come over to yours, but we canceled yours because of the weather. Yeah. And then it turned off pretty. Mm -hmm. Mother Nature just kind of tricked us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we could have had a ball that afternoon, even though it was still a little windy. But now, Brandon had a real good coat. That's what he said. Said but he had a good right time. here is one that uh, Bob says it was his birthday, so he treated himself. This right here is by Bruce Pearl out of a, I believe, a limestone Lucy mare. So Bob went back, went home with his hands full. That's a nice coat right there. Them guys out of Mississippi stored their coat. The coat of. The coat preview doing lanes, they brought him over there. They never did ride him in that coat preview, but they had him over there and rode him at my barn. Well, he's a nice coat, yeah. no doubt about that now. That Limestone Lucy was a three time world champion show oh, player yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. Limestone, here's the barn party, all horses. Getting started right here at Brandon Tate's place, and first horse we see is the Lester H. Burns. This is a Lester H. Burns of a Titleist mare. And I have a Walltown Charlie mare. Next up, Limestone Construction Company, a Jose three year old stallion. Three year old stallion. Uh, I am Jose. Several people down there. Mm -hmm. Next out, the Lester H. Burns coat at a Brent Crowder stable. Come outside here, and we've got Robbie Radley on the Lester H. Burns. Looks like the Lester H. Burns Philly. Well, that's a big place down there, right? Oh, yeah. Back here in the back, kicking up their heels. It's a pretty big crowd here right now, following this Lester H. Barney Philly. Robert Bradley in the saddle. That late Lester H. Burns. Oh, yeah. He, he dropped some good off pranks. Lester H. Real good off pranks. It looks like the next horse up at a Latham stable, Jackson Latham. Is a Star's 
Stud, Star Struck, Stud Coat. Star Struck, Stud Coat. Yeah. Bobby Bradley and Lester Coat. Getting a pretty good crowd here now, right here at Limestone Livestock Company. Brandon Tate, really enjoying this. Lester H. Farms Billy. Now we're back to the Starstruck Stud Coat. Great Starstruck Coat. <laughs> Is trained by Jackson Latham, and I can tell you right now, his name is Cab Calloway. Uh, what's your telephone number, Jackson? 615-691-0020. There you go. Any interested parties, feel free to give Jackson a phone call. Starstruck Coat just keeps getting better with every step right out of Jackson Latham's fables. Brent Crowder Stables, the Jazz Line Philly. Jazz Line Philly. Brent Crowder Stables. Jazz Line Philly. Jazz Line Philly. Brent Crowder Stables. Got a pretty good trip. Oh yeah. Brent Brider take down there. Yep. Right out of line, sounds like drink the cup of these hollers right now. Real nice slim shady coat. There's a Dixie Lineman Philly out of Tony Palomino Stable. For the Philly. Yeah. Cottonwood Farm. Yeah, a lot of horses yeah. down there. Real nice yeah. filly here. Give Martin a call if you see any of these Cottonwood coats, whether it's a Lester Ace Burns, the NRA, and he would be glad to deal with you. That's right out of Brent Grider Stables. This is a good coat coming to your old. It is by a full brother to Walk Time Charlie. Made me think of something. I had a lady that asked me this. Said, How come that they'll have a 
a horse that is a sorrow with a flax mane and tail and tell you that he's a full brother to a black horse. I said, that's just the way Mother Nature does it. That's right. Well, my daughter is blonde headed. My, one of my sons is light yeah. brown headed and the other one's dark headed. Yeah, that's right. Must have been where the moon was. <laughs> <laughs> Or what sign they were born under. Brandon put on the dog now, oh, I'm gonna yeah. tell you he that. He had he had the, the horses. Yep. Yeah. That, that's what matters. He had the horses. Pretty neat little show horse here out of Ryder with tables. All right. And now he he, he I'm glad oh, I'm glad Bob sent me that video. That's right. Bob Broach, I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. I want to remind everybody of our show, though. This is uh, I'm 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 looking forward to the youth show. I am too. Uh, and, but I'm you know Jerry, we say we're going to use those funds for youth activities, and I mentioned to Chris Hazelwood that I'd love to see some of our younger people get involved in the extreme cowboy competition, and then uh, I watched a video this morning of uh, the uh, kitty rodeo where the five and under were barrel racing. Yeah. Now, I mean, they wasn't flying around the ring, but they were getting it done. Not, yeah. And that, that, I mean, some of them took them 35 seconds. Uh, one kid took them 19 seconds. But these are things that we could teach our kids to do on walking horses. horses that's right. In, in inner competition and, and to me, I think it's great. Anything you get a kid, one of them ladies said, well, we don't have to worry about if to discipline our children. We tell them they can't ride. We don't tell them we're going to take the iPad away. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to let them keep the iPad, but we tell them we're taking that horse, what, they, oh, they tighten up. They tighten up. <laughs> that makes the You're difference. exactly right. All right. Well, that's going to be our show for this week. You did a good job narrating that video, Jerry. I appreciate it. My, my hat goes off to you, buddy. Just sitting here watching you. No, you know, you learn it. I'm learning. Right. We'll see everybody next week. See you later. <laughs>